everyone, welcome back to Studio 33 Art by Kay. Today I'm going to be doing another experiment. I'll do a few of these and um, you can learn along with me. This is a round MDF placemat, which I bought from our local um, Spotlight store, which is like a hobby type store. It also has um, homewares like sheets and towels and all that type of thing. Um, it's 25 centimetres across and I'm just going to be doing the experiment with the global high flow acrylic paints. I've mixed them up uh, one part paint to two parts Australian flow troll. I just want to see how they will blow out um, like a Dutch pour. And the base I'm going to put down is the Araldo Di Piolo acrylic pouring paint. So I won't have any flow troll in that at all. Um, so that's the white and I'm going to do a split base with the black. Um, also the acrylic pouring paint from Araldo, um, which is the black. So to blow it out, I'm going to use my smallest mini blower and I've attached to it the Puffy 2000 attachment. So I'll see if that will work for me or not. If not, I'll have to use my hairdryer or maybe the straw. So we'll just um, work that one out as we go along. So I've just wiped this over with a baby wipe just to get any dust off it. Um, I don't think I'll need to have any base paint down as in insofar as some um, sealer, um, like a primer or anything because it's a very dense board. Um, so it's not very porous as far as I know. So we will find out. So without further ado, I shall try and lay half white, half black. I'm just going to turn it this way and then I'll blow it the other way. Okay, so I'll just speed this bit up for you and we'll be back in a moment. Okay, well I think I've got enough paint on there. When you're doing um, a blow hairdryer pour or a Dutch pour, you do need to have a little bit um, deeper paint than for normal pores so that that allows the paint to sort of glide so um, that's why it's a little bit deeper than normal so I'll just burst any bubbles and now I'm going to take my paints from the high flow range and I'm just going to layer those with I'm going to put the gold as the last color on the top because it's a metallic, I'm hoping that when it goes over the top of the other colors, that it will cause a um, physical reaction. Um, and because it's a bit heavier, because it's metallic, it will sink through and, and cause some lacing. But don't know until I do it. So this one is the color Deep Dive. I'm just going to, it's very, very thin. Gonna run that through the middle there. Then I'm going to put over the top of that the phthalo green. It's all so thin, it's probably all gonna just um, mix together, I don't know. And then I'm gonna put the fuchsia Who knows what we're going to get. If it doesn't work out, at least you'll know what not to do. So I will still show you the video, whether it works out or not. And this one is um, metallic rose gold. So again, that might help to create some cells on the top there or not. And last but not least, the metallic gold. Almost tempted to put some of my Mont Mate Mart pouring paint gold on there, but because uh, I know it will help to create cells. But let's just do this for now. So now I'm just going to take my mini blower. Are there any bubbles there? I might just see if I can burst any bubbles if there is. So let's see what we get, guys. I've got no idea. Off we go. Thank you. 
All right, as you can see, that was never going to um, blow that out. And I don't think I can put it on there, no, I can't put it on there towards the end because it would have uh, given it more pressure. Yeah, so that would have blown it out if I had have had that on the end of um, closer to the air. So I'll have to work that one out. Um, so in the meantime, I think I will just blow this out with the straw. I can see that cells have been created there, so that's a good sign. It's really quite nice. Well, I've certainly um, achieved a lot of cells there. This little bit in the middle hasn't blown out much. I, I really think I'm almost inclined to just use my um, heat embossing tool because it does blow air and it's not going to be as much as the hairdryer. So I'm just going to try just re-blowing a little bit around here just to see what will happen. Okay, so I've definitely got some cells. This is interesting, what we've got here. A lot of cells in there. It'll be interesting to see how this dries, being that um, the high flow paints are so fluid. Um, so I'm just going to do a little bit of modification, just using a bamboo skewer. As you can see, it's been many used many times. I'm just going to use the flat end of it. I'm just going to do some working through here. Okay, so now I'm going to spin it out because there's a lot of paint in here where the paints are thin. If I had a bigger piece and had have used my hair dryer, it would have blown the paint, um, the thin paint further. But as it is, because it's a small piece, I didn't blow it very far. So it's very, um, a lot of paint in the middle here. Um, so I'm just going to spin it out and see what happens.
Well, it's interesting. Some interesting patterns. I'm just going to get my hair dryer and just blow it out. See what happens. Might just actually, I'll put some more paint down first through the middle um, and then blow it out. It's all part of the experiment. Just going to run some fuchsia down each side because I'm blowing it out each way. So I'd like that pink to be on each side. And then we'll put the rose gold. I don't know why they call that rose gold. It's, it's almost um, copper to me. And I'll just wiggle it through. And then I'll do the same with the metallic gold. Okay, I'm gonna have paint going everywhere. So now I'm just gonna use my normal hair dryer that I use on low. I really like this hair dryer because um, when I have it on low, I can really control it quite well. So even though that was a small piece, that hair dryer blew that out beautifully. Um, so I should have used it in the first place. So we've got lots of cells. And then we've got this piece through the middle um, where it's not blown out, which is what I wanted. because so I was blowing it out each way, one over to the white, one over to the black. So that's really, really interesting. And I'll be interested to see if the paints, I can see this sort of starting to break up a little bit here. So just going to run a skewer through the middle here. Almost looks like coral under the ocean there, actually. Hmm. So it's certainly formed cells. So I'll just hit it with the heat embossing tool. And it's created a few more cells there. So that's our little experiment. Um, I'll see how that dries and I'll bring you down for a close-up first though, but then I'll let it dry over the next couple of days and then I'll um, put a video of the dried result and we'll just see how much of it does break up or whether it does hold together. Okay, so I think I'll just leave that right there. So here we are coming down for the close-up. You can see on the white side, we've got all these cells that have been created. And this rose gold, which is nothing like rose gold, as I say, it looks some um, copper to me. Um, it's just lovely in the middle there and also with the metallic gold. And then over on the side here that I mixed with the black, uh, a lot of cells here too, some nice lacing just there. And more cells. So we certainly get cells um, with those high flows mixed with the Australian flow drop. And it's a crazy piece. It was worth doing the experiment. And we'll see how it dries. That will be the real test. So I'll see you back here in a couple of days um, to see how it did dry. See you then.
Well, here I am three days later with the dried result of the global high flow paints that were mixed with Australian Flow Troll. Um, I'm really, really happy with the result. I um, thought that the paint had sort of was starting to break up and that it wouldn't hold its shape, but it didn't at all. Um, I actually went through after I finished the video um, the other day with a skewer and just ran through some of the cells to create these sort of pretty um, shapes here, um, just to add a bit of interest. And um, they have just held this shape absolutely beautifully. It has dried a little dark and moody, and uh, that's mainly because I, as you will remember, had half black base, half white base. Um, and then I, one of the colors I used was the um, Deep Dive, which is a dark blue greeny color. So that has dried quite dark. But I do feel that once I give it a coat of Liquitex um, gloss varnish or high gloss varnish, or maybe do a coat of resin, I think I will, um, that will really bring those colors back to life again. So totally happy with how these paints worked. Um, as I say, particularly considering how thin they were. And um, as I say, they've held their shape so, so well. So I think I will definitely use the high flows mixed with Australian Flow Troll again. And maybe next time I won't uh, use them just on their own, but I'll just mix them in with other colors as well, other uh, paints, um, not just the high flow. Um, but I certainly won't be afraid to um, put them in with other colors. So that was the result, guys. Hope you like it. Um, I really do love the way, you know, these colors have uh, dried. So we'll leave that one there. And I'll see you back here in Studio 33 in the not too distant future. Until then, stay safe. And um, we'll be back to do some more experimenting. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you.